I decided to do my first top five video on KISS because they were one of the first bands I really ever got into. You gotta think, at the time, this was about 1997, 1996, so they were doing the reunion tour at the time. And at the time, music was very, in my opinion, kind of bland. There were uh, not a whole lot of people that were doing a lot to stand out. And as a kid who was just kind of discovering music and things of that nature, to see these literal superheroes get out there and start spitting fire and their guitars were, were smoking and things like that, I thought that was so cool and so different. And that's what really attracted me to them. Not only that, but obviously they had the best merchandise around too. I had all the Kiss toys, the action figures, the games, the trading cards, everything like that. I even have here, this is an actual photo of me as Gene Simmons at my very first concert that my dad took me to. This was the KISS farewell tour in 2001, so we know that it wasn't really farewell. But I got my face painted, and there you go, right there. And God bless my dad, because he is not exactly the biggest KISS fan. So, needless to say, KISS has always kind of been in my life in one form or another, whether it be in the form of comic books, toys, or even just the topic of conversation. You know, over the years, their lineup has changed a lot, and KISS fans are very opinionated about what is their favorite lineup, who is the better drummer, who is the better this person. So, these are my top five personal favorite KISS albums and they're in no particular order here. I'm just going to talk about them. My first album that I'm going to talk about is Alive 3. Alive 3 is my favorite of all the Alive albums that they put out. This is the Alive album that has Gene, Paul, but then it also has Bruce Kulick and Eric Singer. This was right after Eric Carr died. This was during the Revenge Tour. And it's an incredible album because what they did was they recorded songs that had previously been on other Alive albums. So you get things like Rock and Roll All Night, uh, you get um, a couple other pieces, and it really, really works. Detroit Rock City is on there, and it's a fan. They're all great versions. And in my opinion, that was one of the best versions of KISS. Don't get me wrong, I love Ace Frehley, I love Peter Chris. that is the classic lineup. But if I had to pick one outside of that, it would definitely be this Revenge lineup because they were really focused on the music. The opening track of Creatures of the Night is just so cool when it cuts into it. And this album probably contains the best version of I Was Made For Loving You. I really am not too big of a fan of the original version of that song, but the version on this one is the revenge version of it, if that makes any sense. It's very metal. This was a really cool album to have when I was a kid, too, because it came with a KISS family tree. When you opened up the booklet, it had a layout of where all the band members had been and things like that, so it was really my first introduction to be like, whoa, okay, KISS wasn't just four guys. It's this big, massive thing that a lot of people have been involved in. The second KISS album on my list is KISS Destroyer. This is, in my opinion, the essential KISS album. They had just done a live, and they basically needed to prove that they could do what they did on stage in the studio, which was not easy for them. So what they did was they called in Canadian producer Bob Ezrin, who had done some fantastic work with Alice Cooper, Welcome to My Nightmare. Um, he had done a couple other bands as well, and he really whipped them into shape for this particular album. It's not to say that the previous KISS albums weren't that good, but this one had a production quality that really, really showed. It's been well documented at this point, but Ace Frehley does not play all the guitar tracks on this particular album, and that was for a little bit of political reasons. He wasn't always there, and Bob Ezrin, you know, kind of had to put him through the paces, and he was kind of the person who didn't want to do the work. Uh, Frehley has talked about this, and he's kind of openly admitted to it, so it's not really any news to anybody at this point. Some of my favorite songs on here, obviously outside of the standards, like Detroit Rock City and, uh, you know, shout it out loud. I, you know, I've never understood this. A lot of KISS fans don't like Do You Love Me. I, I like that song. I think it's really good. The first real ballad I ever heard was Beth, and I think that's true for a lot of fans of, of KISS, is that Beth was a song that we kind of had to be like, you know, yeah, it's about a girl, but it's a really good song. It, it was one of the most popular songs uh, of 1976. There's a lot of debate among KISS fans of what is a good song and what's a bad song. KISS fans are very opinionated, they're very divided, but Beth is one of those songs that no matter, you know, what era a KISS fan likes, no matter, uh, you know, what, who they think was the best or whatever, they all tend to love Beth, and, and I'm definitely included in that. 
The third KISS album that is my favorite is uh, one that people have very split opinions of, and that is Music from the Elder. This was uh, a time when KISS was trying to recapture some of their hard rock fans, and at the time, concept albums were very big. So they got Bob Ezrin, who worked on Destroyer, to come back, and unfortunately at that time, Bob was not exactly in the right state of mind, and neither were the members of KISS. They had just outed Peter Chris. they had Eric Carr in there, Ace was kind of distant, he showed up, played his part, and then left. And the whole concept was this young boy who meets these four elders, these four beings from another dimension, and goes on this journey to become the chosen hero. Very, very, you know, cut and paste, you know, Excalibur type story. It also has really good songs on there. World Without Heroes, I think, is a really underappreciated song. They played it at Unplugged, and that's a great version of that. It also has the song I, and whenever I play that for people, they really tend to like it. It's a very good, bombastic, 80s, you know, uh, rock and roll track, and, and I think it, it, uh, it stands out. And they have really kind of not talked about The Elder, except in very bad terms. There's a story that Ace really took the record and smashed it against the wall once he heard it. It was not a success, it was not something that people really grabbed onto, but KISS fans have always kind of like wanted that album re-recorded live or something of that nature because they love it so much. And I think that's great because it's it's such a weird album and that's why, you know, I love it. And it's it's just so bizarre. I love seeing music videos from that album because they're just so crazy and weird and the costumes are weird and it's just a very odd period of KISS. And I kind of wish things would have gone forward on that because I would have loved to have seen that movie. Wouldn't you, Andy? Yeah, I would like to see it. The fourth KISS album that I have chosen is Psycho Circus. Psycho Circus came out in 1998, and when it did, it was like Christmas for me because, again, I had just gotten into them as music, and to find out that they were reunited, coming out with a new album absolutely blew me away. I was so excited, and when I got it, it shattered all my expectations. It, it was a really, really good album. It's well documented now that uh, Peter and Ace, while they're on the cover and they're credited, they only had involvement with only one or two tracks. It's one of those albums that it's, it's really grown on me over the years. I really tend to enjoy it. The title track, obviously, Within, Into the Void, the, uh, uh, Finally Found My Way uh, to You. It's, it's a really solid album. Even though it's not technically all four original members, it's still a very well put together piece, in my opinion. I think it's really, really good. Of course, Kiss doesn't like to do anything halfway, so when this album came out, they really went full board on it. The tour itself was in 3D, so you went and you got 3D glasses and they had projection screens that had 3D images coming at you. And I kind of thought to myself, well that's really cool, but aren't all concerts in 3D technically? But you know, whatever. And originally the tour had circus acts come along with them, but that didn't last very long because I guess they wanted to be paid the same amount as Kiss. Yeah, that's the story. I don't know if it's true. The final Kiss album on my list is the very first album, Kiss released in 1973. This is my definition of New York rock. It starts off a strutter. How you can't get any better than that. That that opening drum track is just so good. And you know, there's a lot of stories about the recording process being not that easy and that it, they weren't happy with the mixing, but you know, it's one of those ones I, I like it for all its imperfection. One thing that's kind of odd is that everything, every song has these outros on them where they kind of cut into another track that's in a different rhythm or something like that. Black Diamond is a good example of that with the super extended ending. I never really cared for those parts, but I still think it's a really good album. The album cover is very odd because you've got Peter Chris in this weird makeup that he never really wears again. Ace has this like, uh, you know, spray painted hair. It's, it's very odd, but you know, hey, that's the band and I think that that's something that uh, you know, if they wanted to make their debut, they made their debut. That's all I have to say about KISS for now. I'll probably do a couple more videos on them, but that's all for today, so I'll see you guys next time.